Tonight, financial relief for Minnesota homeowners struggling because of the pandemic is available, but few are taking advantage. Plus, a concerning trend in assisted living facilities in Wisconsin as cases of coronavirus take over. And in Michigan, calls for help as businesses struggle. Some are asking for financial relief, while others want things to return to normal. From CBS3 Duluth, this is the CBS3 News at 6. Good evening, I'm Kristen Bakke. Thanks for joining us. In July, the Minnesota government allocated nearly $100 million to help COVID-impacted residents pay their bills, but only a fraction of those funds have been used. With the deadline to apply for assistance quickly approaching, CBS3's Kendall Jarbo shares why Duluth City leaders are urging residents to apply. For many residents, the pandemic made Duluth's housing crisis even worse. People are facing uh, housing instability uh, due to job loss or due to other challenges that, that might result uh, out of the, the COVID-19 pandemic. In July, Governor Tim Walz announced a $100 million housing assistance program, but only $67 million has been used so far. The program aims to help Minnesota residents make rent, mortgage, and utility payments. Gives people some peace of mind um, in the midst of all this worrying that we're all uh, doing intermittently about lots of other things in our lives right now. At the start of the pandemic, Governor Walls also issued an eviction moratorium. With landlords caught in a difficult situation, city workers say state funding could help tenants stay on top of their rent and keep their utilities on. This will be able to make sure that the families can keep their water on, keep their gas services on, and this is a way for them to catch up and not end up somewhere that is going to be too difficult to come out of. It's uncertain whether funds will be available again in the future. So Duluth residents are encouraged to use these resources before they're gone. It's out there to help people because we know there are people in our communities, um, you know, not just in Duluth, but statewide that are facing, um, you know, crises. Residents hoping to keep the water running and the lights on for as long as they can. You have until the end of the day on Monday, December 7th to apply for help. To do so, you can call 211. We also have information on how to fill out the application on our website, cbs3duluth.com. COVID cases in Minnesota's long-term care facilities have skyrocketed recently. State health officials report they have increased by 400% in the last two months. The state has about 220 COVID cases per 1,000 long-term care residents, ranking 31st in the nation. Minnesota ranks 27th in deaths per 1,000 residents, sitting at 51. Officials say that's because community spread is impacting those who care for residents of congregate living areas. The state's health commissioner says as we draw closer to a vaccine rollout to hang tight and take the necessary steps to protect fellow Minnesotans. But this is the time to dig deep, to do everything we can, as the governor has said so often, to get as many of our fellow Minnesotans as we can over that bridge to that time when vaccines can help us stamp this virus out and return us to normal. But there's a lot we must do in the meantime. 65% of Minnesota's COVID-19 deaths have occurred in long-term care facilities. Since April, the state has had a five-point plan in place to help these facilities, which includes increased testing, PPE, ensuring adequate staffing, and more. A deadly COVID-19 outbreak has ripped through a Superior Assisted Living Facility. According to the Chief Operating Officer at the Superior Rehabilitation Center, 88 residents have tested positive in the last month. 14 of them died of coronavirus-related complications. 61 have recovered. According to the Wisconsin Department of Health, COVID-19 has helped claim the lives of more than 300 assisted living residents in the state in the last month. Some Twin Ports assisted living facilities are investing in new technology to keep their residents safe. Keystone Bluffs is among several that have installed cold plasma generators to their HVAC systems. The generators produce an electric field filled with highly charged ions. The ions can kill nearly 95% of microorganisms in the air, including viruses like COVID-19. They can also help keep tables and other high-touch surfaces clean of dust and bacteria. Dana Cheetah, Keystone Bluffs administrator, says the $31,000 investment is bringing peace of mind now and when the pandemic is over. It has a lot of benefits, not only just for coronavirus, but also for influenza, mold, 
um, odors, um, and other bacteria. Along with Keystone Bluffs, Cheetah says Diamond Willow Care and several more down in the Twin Cities have also installed cold plasma generators. Visiting loved ones in the hospital or health care facilities has been hard due to the pandemic. You'll never know, dear, how much I love you. Please don't take my sunshine away. Two Duluth sisters have gotten creative in order to spend time with their mom, Jill Coleman, and Amy Pokernich bought an ice fishing house and are camping outside the window of their mom, Donna's, assisted living facility. Donna recently tested positive for COVID-19 and was released from the hospital earlier this week into hospice care. Her daughters say they are making the best of a bad situation. Knowing they're putting a smile on their mom's face means everything. Obviously, it's not ideal. We're sitting outside, but got to make the best of a bad situation. And if she's in the hospital, we wouldn't have, quote unquote, this luxury of being in an ice house. Coming up at 10, we'll hear more from Donna's daughters on how they're making the best of this situation in hopes to keep a smile on their mom's face. Dave's here for a first look at the weather. Dave, uh, warmer than normal out there, I guess. Yeah, now for the lows and the highs. Wow. The last couple of days, the highs were warmer, but the lows were still pretty chilly. Now we've eaten things out. Here's a look at today's high temps. The normals were on 26, and uh, it was as cool as 28 towards Orin Ely, but that's two degrees on the positive side. And maybe in northern Wisconsin, it wasn't as warmer than normal as yesterday, but still 33 in Ashland was more than we're supposed to get this time of year. Same deal with the 32 in Watersmeet. And it's a trend that's going to keep continuing as we get a persistent pattern forming up here now with high pressure system marked off with a border of a thin trough of lower pressure. So dry conditions with a little bit of cloud activity tonight, the weekend, and much of the week ahead. I don't see any snow chances coming our way. Not even a 15% chance like we were hoping for earlier. Well, for the weekend, it'll be mostly cloudy tonight, low in the teens for a lot of towns, and then partly sunny for Saturday and Sunday. Highs again in the lower 30s, about 5 degrees warmer than normal. And again, that's going to persist for the week ahead, and I'll prove it to you by showing you the seven-day forecast in a few more minutes. Thanks, Dave. More people have died on Minnesota roadways so far this year than all of last year. The Department of Public Safety says 367 people have died in car crashes since January 1st. That's compared to 338 for the same time period last year. 364 total people died on roadways in 2019. On a 10-year average, 30 people die on the roads in December. Law enforcement will be stepping up DWI enforcement from now until the end of the year. Gunshots fired at a Virginia home led to a big drug discovery and search for two suspects. It happened this morning at a home on 12th Street North in Virginia. According to police, a man fired several shots into the front door. When someone inside returned fire, the suspect and a passenger fled in a car. Responding officers arrested the person in the home, saying they found a gun and 13 pounds of marijuana inside. Police are still searching for the two people in the car. We're told everyone involved knows each other and no one was hurt. Two gunshots fired into a Central Hillside home has the DPD's Violent Crimes Unit investigating. Police say it happened around 9.45 this morning near 7th Street and North 1st Avenue West. Responding officers found two bullet holes in the home. No one was hurt and no arrests have been made. The Duluth Police Department is warning you about a new scam. They say scammers are calling people posing as law enforcement and claiming they have a warrant for your arrest. They try to get you to buy a gift card and send it to the DPD to stay out of jail. Police say this is never something they would do and you should hang up and report it immediately. Restaurant owners in Michigan are feeling the pinch as the state's ban on dine-in service continues into next week at least. Governor Whitmer is calling for a stimulus plan to put checks into the bank accounts of broke business owners, but some Republicans say they're more focused on the reopening, not just restaurants, but the entire state. Mike Krafchick has the latest from Michigan. Mark Hansen runs a coffee shop in Scotts. Uh, we've had uh, three people from noon, in which normally we are really busy. He says business is down 70% in the two weeks since the state's temporary dining ban took effect. 
We've made it through the first go around with this COVID. You know, I'm hoping we get through this. He needs help now more than ever. We try to abide by the rules that they want, but the help isn't coming from the right places. The governor has called on the Republican-controlled legislature to pass a $100 million stimulus package to help struggling businesses. And $100 million is just a drop in the bucket. It's not going to save very many of them, to be honest with you. Different things uh, played out. A joint select committee hearing chaired by state rep Matt Hall grilled Health and Human Services Director Robert Gordon over COVID regulations. Relief funding was not discussed. The best thing we can do is reopen all of these businesses. And so... You know, these restaurants, we should reopen them. I think it's not an either or. The Small Business Association of Michigan says the state should let suffering businesses make their own choices. The state should issue guidelines required to reopen uh, the, the businesses that have been required to be closed for the last few weeks and help those businesses that are most restricted uh, so that they have at least a shot of making it through the winter. Meanwhile, Hanson waits for help he knows may never come. These places are going to soon be gone pretty soon because of, you know, big government and even local governments don't care. Still to come on Live Local CBS 3, during COVID-19, it's challenging to run a business, but even harder to open one. Why, you'll see a new store in Canal Park next. In 1941, we set the record high for today at 54 degrees. And then 50 years later, 1991, set the low at 16 below. Today, we came up in between with a nudge towards the warmer side, which is a tradition we're going to keep going for perhaps a week here. We'll talk about that and any forlorn snow chances coming up right after our break. Live, local, CBS3 News at 6 with Kristen Vaki, Anthony Matt, Kelly Hinson, and weather with meteorologist Dave Anderson. On live, local, CBS3. When severe weather hits, tune to CBS3 for up-to-date coverage morning and night. Today, we help people. We help them shine bright. Walk with confidence. Help them play like the kid they are. Even plan for a healthy future. Outpatient surgery excellence. Lake Walk Surgery Center. Make your spirits bright with the help of friendly Canal Park businesses this holiday season. Looking for a unique gift for that special someone this holiday season? At Locally Owned Art Dock, you'll find a huge assortment of paintings, pottery, stained glass, and more, all made by artists in the Northland. Come take a look at the breathtaking pieces today at the Art Dock. We are located in the DeWitt Sites Building in Canal Park. Lake Superior Art Glass will teach you the art of how to blow glass. Make your own glass pendants, paperweights, ornaments, and more. Visit our new location in Canal Park or schedule a class online at lakesuperiorartglass.com. The Blue Heron Trading Company celebrating our 35th holiday season with a wonderful assortment of great gadgets, gifts, and cooking gear, along with gourmet foods from near and far. Visit us in the DeWitt Sites Building in Canal Park today. Let Canal Park help make your holiday brighter this year. Your business relies heavily on IT, whether you know it or not. You need local experts that can solve any IT problem. You need Sighton. Proudly serving the Northland since 1994 and trusted by businesses just like yours. Sighton, always on. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Let's check in with meteorologist Caitlin Moffitt this morning. And the below average trend Thanks does so much for joining us. So wake up with us starting at 5 a.m. Watch Caitlin and Jenna in the morning at 5 and 6 a.m. on CBS3. Haberman here from Discover Wisconsin. Join me and the rest of the crew every week on this station for all things Wisconsin. Continue the adventure on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and discoverwisconsin.com. Plus, subscribe to The Cabin Podcast, available wherever you listen to your favorite podcasts. time like this, tensions run real high. Well, then we're going to have to improvise. I was thinking the same thing. 
You gotta strike while the iron is hot. Time to fly. Nice landing. Huh. Teamwork makes the dream work, baby. Right. Buckle up. Can we get back to work, please? Well, that's the plan. Smashing. Smashing. Let's watch together tonight on CBS. Watch Jeopardy at 4.30, followed by CBS 3 Live at 5 on Live Local CBS 3. The Kelly Clarkson Show, right here. Weekdays at 3 on CBS 3. Now, the CBS 3 Duluth WeatherMax forecast with meteorologist Dave Anderson. We're setting up a pattern here now with high pressure dominating the sky in general, but in between those cells of high pressure, we get a trough of lower pressure pushed up and we've been splitting the difference that way in the sky, all right. This picture helps to prove the point. Comes in from Jeff Anderson, former Duluth City Councilor. We get a little bit of blue when the high is in control, and we get a little bit of cloud when the trough is running through. And this pattern will continue to run through our region probably for the next week, with the high pressure at least nominally more in charge than the troughs. And so it's going to be dry. I don't see any chance for snow in the next week. We'll show you a vague hope that some could come our way eventually in just a minute or two. But right now we focus our attention on the current conditions at Duluth International. It's 25 degrees, relative humidity is 81 percent, and the wind has now become calm. Likely will stay that way overnight for all zones. Air pressure on the higher side at 30.11 from the latest in that long line of highs that's controlling our skies. Temperature-wise, we're looking at 27 right now in Watersmeet, just a degree warmer in Ironwood. And it's also 28 in Ashland, just a little bit cooler up the road towards Bayfield and Redcliffe and LaPointe. 26 Hayward, 26 also for Superior. Air degree warmer than that in Moose Lake at 27, but down to the teens for the North Shore for some towns, teens to lower 20s for the Iron Ranges and Border Country. That's where our low temps will bottom out tomorrow morning into the teens for some inland towns and lower 20s for many of the rest of us. Doppler map right now shows that if we've got that yin and yang battle going between high and low and cloud and clear, it looks like the clear is winning out right now, but keep in mind, Cloud could come back tonight as we keep looking at that repeating pattern in between the highs. We get the troughs and high and trough long enough, enough troughs, enough highs to keep going for a week. Any hope for snow this week? Maybe by next Friday there will be a low pressure system coming in from the Pacific that will collide with uh, British Columbia here and bring a chance for some flurries out west that might eventually get to our region. That's about the best we can hold for right now with this persistent dry spell still holding on to the area. Tonight in Minnesota should be dry with low temps from 13 inland to 23 by the lake. Into Wisconsin and Michigan, low temps there about 17 to 22. Everyone should have a mostly cloudy sky and calm winds. For tomorrow, it becomes partly sunny for everybody with Wisconsin and Michigan highs in the lower to mid 30s. Minnesota highs upper 20s to lower 30s. South wind takes over, goes 5 to 10. And now with the extended forecast, there we go. Dry, fairly sunny, little bit of cloud activity, high temps, warmer than normal in the 30s. Overnight low temps, warmer than normal in the 20s. On the bright side, uh, you know, if you're a snow fan, that's not great news for you, but it sure is helping to save on our heating bills. And we're keeping pollution out of the sky as well. That's true. Silver lining. Yeah, you always find the silver lining. Sometimes in you have to Dave. dig. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Thanks, Dave. In the midst of the pandemic, a lot of small businesses have been closing, but now a new one is coming to Duluth Canal Park. The Lake and Company Shop opened its doors for the first time today. The pop-up shop is a collaboration between Flagship Apparel and Lake Company, which runs several magazines. The store will be a way to showcase products featured in their publications. Owners say it's a challenging time to open this pop-up location, but they're still excited about the prospects. It's kind of a whole different game on sales and traffic, um, making sure that we're creating a safe environment for our shoppers. Um, so it's definitely been challenging, but we're really excited to be here and we want to be able to support people in a lot of different ways. The Lake Company also has a retail location in Grand Rapids. The pop-up location in Duluth will be open through March. For more information and a list of their hours, you can head to our website. With the gray wolf no longer listed as endangered, Wisconsin residents can start hunting the animal again. The DNR announced a wolf hunting season today. It will start November 6th of 2021. Delisting the animal has been controversial. Critics argue the population has not stabilized enough 
Meanwhile, farmers are frustrated with wolves killing their livestock. At last count, there were about 1,000 wolves in Wisconsin. Ahead in sports, the UMD women's hockey team looks to give back in the win column as they welcome in St. Cloud State, a preview of tonight's game coming up right after the break. For coverage that matters most to you, tune to CBS3. When severe weather hits, tune to CBS3 for up-to-date coverage morning and night. CBS3 Live Cams are brought to you by Kohler Chevrolet Buick GMC Cadillac. You're not just getting a car, you're getting Kohler. This year, Santa's got his naughty, nice, and now his shop local list. With a unique variety of shops and restaurants, there's something for everyone at Victor's. And for business or leisure, Fitgers Inn is Duluth's premier lakefront getaway. Fitgers. Shop. Eat. Sleep. We can help you at Ketamine North Infusion Center. I was stuck in a gray area. The first treatment, I actually laughed and scared myself because I hadn't heard myself laugh in years. Visit us online. Be well with us at Ketamine North Infusion. What do you get when you add care from Essentia Health and coverage from UCARE? Essentia Care, now available for a more affordable price. Essentia Care's Medicare Advantage plans have premiums that start at $0 per month in select counties. You'll be able to see your Essentia Health provider at our 15 hospitals and 71 clinics. Plus, Essentia Care plans allow you the freedom to see any provider who accepts Medicare. Compare and shop plans at ucare.org slash Essentia Care. The Greater Downtown Council encourages you to celebrate downtown this holiday season. Your support of local businesses is vital to our local economy. Your friends at Security Jewelers love the holidays a ton. We are delighted to help our customers find something for their special one. It might be a watch or a shiny new ring. Trust Security Jewelers to help you find the very best thing. Happy holidays! Namaste features an eclectic array of gifts focused on the mind, body, health, and home. All ages can experience the beauty and benefits of crystals and their properties, from sage to sound bowls and gift cards for everything in between. Namaste. Duluth Pack is handcrafted for every lifestyle, making memories since 1882. Visit our store in Historical Canal Park or online at DuluthPack.com. Show your love to Duluth's downtown waterfront. Keep it local and enjoy the holidays. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Let's check in with meteorologist Caitlin Moffitt this morning. And the below average trend Thanks does so much for joining us. So wake up with us starting at 5 a.m. Watch Caitlin and Jenna in the morning at 5 and 6 a.m. on CBS3. Tonight, we'll signal the start of the final home series of 2020 for the sixth-ranked UMD women's hockey team. UMD will welcome in St. Cloud State, a team that the Bulldogs have had great success against in recent years. All-time, UMD leads the series, winning 69 games and only dropping 14 to the Huskies. And just last season, the Bulldogs were unbeaten against SCSU. Head coach Maura Kroll discussed earlier this week what the Huskies do that creates challenges for her team. I expect a good... Um good defensive scheme for those guys. And they also have some really good goal scores up front um, that they return. So that's that's where they get tricky is they have that goal, good goaltending. They can frustrate good scoring teams. And then they have kids that can put the puck in the net. 
Elsewhere in the WCHA, the Badgers and Gophers were scheduled to play in Minneapolis this weekend, but that series has been postponed due to po positive tests within the Wisconsin program. The Badgers are scheduled to host UMD for a two-game series next weekend. As of now, that's still on as scheduled, but certainly in jeopardy as a result. The Gophers announced that they have added a series against Minnesota State. To the pros, the NHL and the Players Association are still in the middle of talks about how and when to get the season started. According to TSN in Canada, league officials are now looking at a mid-January start date. Several schedule options have been presented. Some included a 56 or even a 52 game slate. But there still are plenty of hurdles to get past, including discussions on temporary realignment and the possibility of an all-Canadian division. With the NHL still discussing their next move, the NBA, on the other hand, is ready to go. And today, the schedule dropped for both the Timberwolves and the Bucks. The Timberwolves begin their new season at home versus the Detroit Pistons on December 23rd. Following that cont contest, Minnesota will hit the road to face three playoff teams in the Jazz, Lakers, and Clippers. The Wolves will then return home on New Year's Day to host Russell Westbrook and the Washington Wizards. As for the Bucks, it won't be an easy start for the top team in the East just a year ago. Milwaukee will begin their year, their year on December 23rd at Boston before heading home to host Steph Curry and the Golden State Warriors on Christmas Day. Then just a few days later, they will play at the defending Eastern Conference champions, the Miami Heat, in back-to-back -back games on December 29th and December 30th. Now that's all for sports. I'll send things back to you, Kristen. All right. Thanks, Neil. Well, tonight on the CBS 3 News at 10, what should be a joyous occasion filled with good food and company turned dark for one Wisconsin family. Tonight, we'll hear the struggles from a family in Ashland who is homeless after their house burned down on Thanksgiving Day. We'll leave you with this. The first crop of radishes grown on the International Space Station is now harvested. This video shows their growth inside the advanced plant habitat. On November 30th, astronaut Kate Rubens collected the 20 plants and put them into cold storage for the return to Earth next year. The experiment is to help NASA learn to grow quality plants on the ISS. NASA says it chose radishes because they reach maturity in less than a month. Hmm. Dave, it seems like it's been warm enough, like gardeners are just itching to get back out yeah. there. <laughs> Keeping radishes in the fridge and forgetting about them for a year sounds like my place. Uh, that's my kind of uh, growing. I better go home and clean out here tonight <laughs> yeah. in between newscasts. But like you mentioned, we're getting into a warmer than normal trend, but only by a hair. So it's not a drastic one, but enough, as we mentioned, perhaps to keep the fuel bills at bay, at least for a little while. Or frankly, a long while, because with higher pressure in control, more so than lower pressure this week, it's going to be dry with high temps in the 30s, overnight low temps in the 20s. There's a very vague chance that maybe by next Saturday we'll get some flurries. It's going to be a long wait for snow fans. All right, that's all we have for you tonight at 6. Anthony will be in at 10. Have a great night.